Hello and welcome to my Warp 2 review video. In a minute we'll get into technical things, take a look at the risers, talk about takeoff, how it flies, landing, and my overall thoughts on the glider. Alright, let's start by taking a look at the Warp 2 risers. Uh, these toggles are um, actually Snake 3 toggles that I purchased uh, specifically because I like to fly uh, on speed bar a lot with power attack and this gives me a little bit more safety and um, only applying pressure to the tip steering line when I'm fully accelerated and not any pressure to the main brake line and I do that by keeping my hand in this position and then just rotating my wrist to pull the tip line. Uh, the Warp 2 comes with uh, the same toggles that the Warp 1 and the Drift Air came with. These are Snake 3 toggles if you are interested, but these do not come with the Warp 2. I've just bought them and put them on my Warp 2. Uh, the other huge difference between the Warp 2 and the Warp 1, the Warp 2 is now a 3-liner. The Warp 1 was only a uh, was a four line, so you had A's, B's, C's, and D's. The Warp 2 is a three liner, so these are your A's, these are your B's, these are technically a C uh, tip tip line. So these uh, this is your Stabilo line, this green one here. So because it's a three liner, uh, they can't alter the geometry of the airfoil as much throughout the speed range compared to if it were a four-liner. Uh, however, the benefits of being a three-liner is uh, a lot less line drag, so you can make a more efficient design, more efficient glider, uh, if you only have three lines. These risers are not as long as the Warp 1. I'm actually able to get use the full speed bar travel on uh, the Warp 2 compared to the Warp 1, which it was such a long speed bar travel. Uh, it was really difficult to set your speed bar up to use the full range. Um, so that's a plus in my opinion. Uh, the other change is this uh, ring is in the speed bar, which makes the bar pressure higher uh, as you push on the speed bar compared to the Warp 1. Uh, trim range is about the same. It goes out to 15 centimeters. 15 centimeters right there. And of course, this has power attack the same as the Warp 1 and the Drift Air. And uh, you just remove this line if you want to use that. Uh, this Warp 2 also comes with tip steering toggles installed. And normally, the tip steering lines are down here, very low, right, on, right above the carabiners. Uh, uh, yeah, the tip steering lines do hang very low, but at least the glider comes with them, and you have the option to remove them if you don't like. But because they hang low, just really watch them uh, for takeoff and landing. Um, they're very easy to snag in your prop if you leave them installed. Just something to be aware of. All right, moving on. Let's look at the rest of the wing. Uh, you see that the whole upper cascade is uh, unsheathed lines. Um, very great for efficiency. Not so great for uh, friction knots. So for your pre-flight on this wing, just take care to uh, check for friction knots in the upper cascade and even some of the uh, lower cascade down here is also unsheathed lines. Um, near the risers everything is sheathed down here. So the Warp 2 has rods in the trailing edge. This is a change from the Warp 1. The Warp 1 did not have this. See these uh, plastic rods right here? It comes all the way to here and it ends right about here and then also the uh, here's a rod that comes down to about here on the leading edge and then it wraps all the way around to the front uh, that's a change from the warp one hadron xx was a three liner and it also had trailing edge rods like this i like it my hadron xx flew awesome and i prefer the way that the warp two flies over the warp one as well and uh, I'll hit on that later. The Warp 2 
inlets appear to be a slightly bigger in my opinion although i don't have um, another warp to compare side by side but in my opinion i think these are a little bit larger cell openings you have these um uh, rods in between each cell as well that help hold the inlets open this glider is a 16 meter and let's talk about the takeoff the footage you're looking at right now is actually my very first flight on the warp 2 and all went well it was very windy winds were like 20 miles an hour but still sent it here's another takeoff very light winds you can see the wing inflates very aggressively very fast faster than what I'm used to especially because I haven't been flying my smaller gliders um, so almost catches you off guard and I'll show you an example of that here in a minute here is another uh, kind of moderate to light wind takeoff just enough wind to do a reverse wasn't quite strong enough right there so set the glider back down gave it another shot and off we go overall the glider inflates much better than the warp one did here's a failed takeoff glider just overshot and I didn't quite catch the surge quick enough thankfully no damage done just reset and took back off slow motion the glider just surges forward so quick whereas the warp one tended to hang back a little bit more and that's all just because the dudek has changed the trim the trimming of the lines on the glider the warp two is trimmed much faster all right next i want to demo for you the roll stability of the glider here i'm demonstrating uh, if i induce a turn or an oscillation and then i just put my hands up and do nothing uh, what does the glider do it doesn't oscillate so much to where it builds into wing overs, but it also uh, will not uh, stabilize on its own. You will have to add brake input. Here I'm just pumping the brakes just to kind of see how the wing reacts. Uh, lots of trim speed, so you do have lots of flare energy built into the brakes. And the next couple of clips I was uh, basically intentionally flying through my own wake to see how the glider reacted. Disclaimer, don't try this on every glider because some gliders uh, can collapse. And you'll see that when you do fly through your own wake with the warp 2, there's a little bit of yaw oscillation that the glider produces, but not really any surges in the pitch axis. And that really inspires confidence. That's a huge improvement over the warp 1. The warp 1 surged more than probably any other dudek glider that I've owned and the warp 2 is just uh, a lot more solid in the pitch axis here I'm on about half speed bar I'm pulling some big ears just to test how the glider responds reacts to that most likely scenario when you're flying accelerated you would take a small wingtip collapse and so I'm just kind of testing that. And the glider reinflates almost instantly as soon as you release the lines. But overall, I'm uh, really happy with the uh, stability and the uh, apparent collapse resistance of the Warp 2 compared to the Warp 1. It feels even more solid. It moves as one solid wing. Um, and there's a lot less surges in the pitch axis on the warp 2 compared to the warp 1. Here you go with the official speed test of the warp 2. This is trims in upwind. You'll see the text there above my GPS. This was a uh, screen recorded from my phone. This is GPS ground speed, not airspeed. Therefore, I measured uh, speeds in both directions. Uh, you can see that trims in, the trim speed is about an average of 
uh, I don't know, 31, 32 miles an hour. And um, that's faster than the Warp 1. The Warp 1 trims all the way in was very slow, like 25 or 26 miles an hour. Um, so that's one of the major changes that really changes how the glider launches, how it feels in the air, you land faster, gives you more flare authority, etc., etc. Here's trims out downwind. I'm not on speed bar yet, and I'm already going 40 miles an hour. Uh, so trims out average between upwind and downwind, you're looking at somewhere around 40 miles an hour. Just trims release. And then as you'll see here in a second, full speed average upwind and downwind gives me right at like 49 miles an hour at this wing loading. However, I flew uh, with my winter gear on a few extra pounds and I was able to cruise consistently at 50 miles an hour uh, full speed on the Dudek Warp 2. And at the same time, hands free on the glider. Not every glider can fly 50 miles an hour. And also, the gliders that can fly 50 miles an hour, a lot of them you can't take your hands off the brakes at 50 miles an hour, or the glider will begin to oscillate. Huge plus for the Warp 2. One of my favorite things about the glider is how fast it is and stable at that speed. All right. Now you've got the facts. Let's throw this thing around and I'll give you my opinion overall on the Warp 2. Obviously, this glider rips. It's awesome. If you've flown the Warp 1 and you loved it, the Warp 2, in my opinion, is nothing but an improvement over the Warp 1. So, go out and buy one today. Uh, you will not be disappointed. That said, this glider is not for everyone. I have to be honest here. This is a glider that requires a lot of experience, a lot of attention to detail. Um, Dudek recommends hundreds of hours of flight experience. This is not a second glider for someone. And in my opinion, it could maybe be a third glider for someone who's very talented and flies I don't know 150 to 200 hours per year on a paramotor also if you only fly once a month even if you have a thousand hours this is probably not the glider for you uh, the reason I say this is maybe not because you will hurt yourself or kill yourself just more so you don't have the currency to extract every bit of potential that this glider can give you even myself right now, I'm not flying as often as I used to, and I can't extract all the potential that this glider has available. I still enjoy it very much. I still sold my Drift Air, uh, and this new Warp 2 is my main uh, hot wing that I'm going to fly. But uh, it requires lots of currency and lots of flight experience to safely operate this glider in all weather conditions. So if you're someone moving from a Drift Air or Hadron 3 and you want a little bit more speed, a little bit more agility and roll, uh, you want the tip steering maybe, maybe a little bit more efficiency over the Hadron 3, great wing. Uh, if you're moving from a free ride, you can expect this glider to be slightly more stable especially in the pitch axis it'll be faster as well uh, still it won't launch as easy as a free ride free ride launches so easy it's ridiculous for for such a hot wing um, but this glider is more roll stable it's more stable in turbulence and it's faster and it comes with tip steering so pros and cons and everything right I'm coming from a Drift Air to the Warp 2. Uh, I find that the Warp 2 is still harder to launch than the Drift Air, even though the Warp 2 is greatly improved in launch characteristics from the Warp 1. Uh, it's still, it's just the aspect ratio is higher, 
and even any glider with a higher aspect ratio the more difficult they become to handle uh, on the ground during the takeoff phase and that that goes not for just paramotor wings but also paragliding wings um, and it just requires lots of practice and experience to uh, manage that I want to add one more thing this is the only flaw that I found in the warp 2 that kind of bothers me and I'm just being nitpicky because I can't really tell the performance difference but I'll show you in this clip here when you're flying near full speed I'm talking 45 50 miles an hour the leading edge wingtips of the uh, glider the leading edge cells on the bottom surface are deformed they're not holding shape the way that I think that they should and if you look really closely at the tip of the wings near full speed you'll see the nose of the glider is kind of smushed in it's kind of flattened um, it, as far as I can tell the glider doesn't behave strangely or anything because of it uh, if anything it's just a loss in efficiency uh, that's a result of the def deformation of the leading edge but uh, it's something that I noticed and it's kind of just annoying to me other than that this is my new hot wing this is what I'll be flying over the next year or two and uh, I don't see myself jumping on anything else anytime soon except for my uh, slow chill uh, float around uh, wing which is the ITV Wasabi if you have questions, comments, uh, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comment box below. I'm very active in the comment form, so I enjoy talking about wings, and I like to hear other people's experiences so we can all learn from each other. So feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Peace. All right, for those who uh, stuck around to the end of the video, I forgot to talk about landings. So I'm throwing in some bonus footage. Uh, this clip here, motor is shut off and winds are very light. So you can get an idea of landing speeds, uh, high wing loading on a small hot glider. Flare is great. Lift all the way down to your brakes or way down by your hips. Um, this clip here, I was doing uh, pulling some G's and uh, I didn't blip the throttle enough so my motor died and uh, I had to land in the field I didn't notice that my motor was off until I was already probably around a hundred feet or so um, but luckily I uh, had set, set myself up for success and uh, I was flying right over this field with a perfect little road in the middle so I just landed on the strip but uh, yeah, here's when I squeeze the throttle and I realize, oh, I don't have any power. Grab the selfie stick and then the brake toggle and a little downwind. That's okay. I can just run it out. Got it. Fun times, fun times. Anyway, warp two lands great. Definitely better than warp one. A uh, little bit more flare, a little bit faster. Thanks for watching. Yeehaw. Uh, let's see if we can get this thing started again. <laughs> I'll be back.